Right, are we recording? We are, yes. Are you out of your friggin' mind? Orange? What, what do you think this is, a Ford Ranger? I'm Andrew St. Pierre White, explorer, overlander, and broadcaster with over 40 years driving 4x4s. Welcome to Forex Overland. I'm a prisoner of this hill. Now come guys, let's get serious about this, okay? Um, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser, which suggests it should be a Toyota Land Cruiser color. Now, the suggestions and two, one ludicrous suggestion today is that I paint it dark metallic gray. I mean, is there a less interesting color for a car in the world than dark metallic gray? Every car is dark metallic gray. So if you want to blend into the traffic, go dark metallic gray. If you want to blend into the bush, then sure you should go a bush color, maybe the, 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 the dull brownish or, or dull yellow, definitely green obviously, blue to a point but not really, but God help me not orange. Do you think that my Land Cruiser should look like a Ford Ranger? Because a Ford Ranger as good as they look, they look good in orange and it suits the kind of driver. I promise you I would leave it white before I changed it to orange. All right, so color. I've decided on the cadet blue and a lot of you will say, yes, Andrew, that's the Why cadet blue? Because it's beautiful and it's a retro Land Cruiser color and it's beautiful and it was a tough choice so what other colors make now look at the the uh, Suzuki Jimny the colors the green is beautiful even their beige is quite nice there there are colors that are not metallic I love those non-metallic colors one of the mistakes they made, I think, with the, uh, the Defender, not the early Defender, but the later Defenders, is that they, they made it in a dark metallic grey, which is so dull, it's so boring. And if you look at the colour palette in a, in a Land Rover brochure, the, you, you, it's a cure for insomnia. There's, there's nothing of interest there. That is why I think I quite like the white one, but everything else looks awful. Toyota's new Land Cruiser has been shown in the press pictures with some very interesting colors, so that the modern trend now is for non-metallic interesting colors. This to me has taken a very, very long time to come about because, well, Toyota did, with it, did it with the FJ, and then didn't do it with anything else. Suzuki have always done it, but particularly, you know, took out the palette when working on the Jimny. And my first green uh, troop carrier, the one that I built in South Africa in 2011, was, I think, the best color I've ever seen in a troopy. And thousands, am I exaggerating? Maybe certainly hundreds of uh, Land Cruiser enthusiasts saw that vehicle, saw the color and changed the color of their vehicle. That green, it's called dark olive, is beautiful and for a short period Toyota did actually make the Land Cruiser 70 series in some countries, not in South Africa and certainly not in Australia, in that color and it was absolutely beautiful. But I, I just felt like a change and if you remember correctly with my troop carrier that I have now in Australia that is wrapped in the battleship grey. That battleship grey, I've never, I've never loved the colour. It looks dramatic. It's a beautiful looking vehicle. But I've never fallen in love with the battleship grey. I like it, but I don't love it. I loved both my greens. And I am determined to actually because if you remember, 
I had intended doing a wrap of my troop carrier, my second VA troop carrier, in Cadet Blue. I mentioned it and decided to go with a standard color. And the reason for that is that wraps, when you print them, in other words, a particular color, it is a combination of CMYK. And the combination together appears as a color. Using an LED light, which is balanced for outdoor, 5,600 5, Kelvin. Here, the metal plate I'm holding is Cadet Blue, and the prints are the closest CMYK prints possible. So the effect of that is that it never looks on camera as, it, as good as it does in real life, for some reason. I decided when I looked at the swatches that they produced for me with the Cadet Blue, I wasn't that happy with it. It didn't have that lovely depth that Cadet Blue has when it was printed in a wrap. So I decided to go with the more robust, their standard color palette of wraps is far more robust. Sunlit UV, the UV rays in Australia are bonkers bad. And so colors fade very quickly in these conditions. So I decided to go for a standard color, but I've never seen a true carrier in Cadet Blue and the Cadet Blue has always attracted me. So when I was looking at those two colors, the green and the blue, when I left South Africa, those two choices were open to me until I posted this video. And it's kind of, forget about the, the, the there were, quite a few, a surprising few, to be honest, uh, votes for orange. And I have to assume that you people who voted for orange are actually 12 years old. But the sensible ones amongst us that have a little bit more maturity went, chose the green and the blue, and we were tossing up. And so there were some good suggestions of some mustard yellows as well. I actually thought those suggestions were quite good. I've gone with the blue and they'll be spray painting it quite soon and I had to react to all of these comments. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being involved. It's been fun. I've read every single one of them and some of you have been ridiculous. And for that I am grateful. Next video on this series will be um, oh, Paul and I discuss the interior build. It's quite a long video. Paul and I discuss the build. Um, and we're thinking about actually putting that as a podcast as well. And so the next actual working on the vehicle will be the reveal of the color. So this is a, a spoiler. We will be printing it, not printing it, painting it in Toyota Cadet Blue. Thank you again. See you next time.